Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam, I be the DNG during political commentary for the media speaks. Uh, you might know me from Wits News, Conservative Daily Post, Teddy Stick, or Blasting News. And I want to mention that as I get started today, because um, many of you will remember that I went to High Vol Fest last year. I was invited by the record label. Hello, Stephen. I was invited by the record label, and I got to interview all of the bands there. I got to see, the, or obviously see the show, review the show. And one of those projects, one of the bands on that roster was Babylon Shakes. And you're going to want to check them out. They've got music that was coming up on the feed, so I contacted High Vol Music, and I will be interviewing them. Hello, Mike. I will be interviewing them later next week, and most likely have an article up about their new music. So if you're fans of the Black Crows, kind of that sleazy rock in the vein of, like, Faster Pussycat, you're going to want to check out uh, Babylon Shakes. And with that, friends, going to get into the news that I had been speaking about in the comment section here when I listed the itinerary, as it were. How many of you are aware of the fact that one of the primary declarations of communism, one of the things that they actually bragged about, was the fact that they were going to control the youth? By that, it was twofold. In some instances, it could be done. And uh, there's an argument that could be made that from the time of jazz, or even the can-can or something, that a certain amount of acceptance to darker thoughts, even during the swing era, remember, Satan takes a holiday by Glenn Miller. And again, you can tell by the hair, and I'm just promoting a rock show, I'm, I'm not preaching to you here, but I'm saying in some ways it's sort of ingrained a normalcy into the culture for certain ideas that were in other times rejected as antithetical or whatever. Well, the bigger point here is that communism has always aimed to do the same thing. It's the part of the Nazis that were communistic. It's one of the elements about them that stood for socialism, of course, in the Nazi name. With that in mind, it's not too hard to see what the media and the powers that be, those that control us or those that pull the strings or whatever you want to say. It's very easy to see that, particularly since the 60s. And I would interject here that a lot of that happened when World War I and World War II fathers were pulled away from the home. And I think that, I mean, we talk about today that the broken homes and the problems that that has created in the culture. I think I'm one of the only ones to point out here that that happened not because the family unit fell apart, but because of World War I and World War II, when fathers were called off overseas, that created a little bit of this that we're seeing in terms of the broken homes and the the whole country being affected more by the media, particularly as it relates to children. And that progressed from the 50s and 60s. And of course, onward, my generation, of course, we talked before about the generation next and all of that. Well, um, the other thing is that they will silence the youth or colleges or whatever. If, if they can't get them on board with their agenda, then the goal is to silence them and those who would influence them in other directions, libertarians, conservative, uh, Christians, traditionalists, those people, their very opinions would be silenced. Now, we saw this with the uh, smearing of the Catholic kids. The kid was just kind of uncomfortable and smiling, and yet he looked smug, well, you're not going to necessarily look like you're terrified of this mob. That's the best way to be beaten by a mob. Um, when Christelle and I we went to... Um, oh, that was awesome. When we went to see Trump in Cleveland, we interviewed Black Lives Matter and a whole lot of protesters. 
And uh, to their credit, uh, one of the people in Black Lives Matter started shouting things at us. And the gentleman that I was speaking to was like, no, 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 he's respectful, leave him alone. You know what? That's what we're supposed to see. Well, I would say easily since 2015, 2016, when this happened, it would be 2015, um, we've seen a worsening of the relationships between the two sides. Well, the youth has been targeted, and those who have supported Trump to some degree have been targeted. That, that goes without saying. Hello, Patrick. Well, the treatment of the Catholic children, and I hate using the word children. The children. I'm on their side, but really quit with the children BS. Um, these young adults, if you will, teenagers, the smearing of them, there was a precursor to that. And a lot of people hadn't caught it in the news. So I went back and found it. This is from December 24th. I found it on Prison Planet, and for those of you that say, I don't like Alex Jones, he didn't write it, it's campus reform. Uh, he's just aggregating it. Free speech advocate UT students self-censor because they are terrified. Let me go to screen share for those of you on the Media Speaks. Hello there. For those of you not on Media Speaks, you should be. Go to YouTube and subscribe. They're the only ones that have screen share. And it's very slow screen share. Nicole Neely, president of the free speech nonprofit Speech First, joined Fox News' Tucker Carlson recently to discuss her organization's latest lawsuit, a case in which campus reform previously reported. The lawsuit defi uh, defiled. There you go. The lawsuit filed on December 13th in the U.S. District Court of the Western District of Texas alleges that the University of Texas engages, engages in unconstitutional practices, which Riley outlined in the segment with Carlson. We allege that the University of Texas has four unconstitutional policies on the books, Neely told Carlson. They have verbal harassment policy, a campus climate response team, a bias response team, as you said, and acceptable use policy, which governs all internet and digital use on campus, another residence hall, manual, and all of these policies violate students' First and 14th Amendments because students are terrified to express their opinions. And it goes on in the article to say that much of this was so unbelievably ambiguous that it was difficult to even tell what could get you in trouble and what couldn't. Just speaking out about the global warming issue, for instance, can be considered hateful to the planet and offensive to people. And I know that sounds like pure folly, but we're reaching rapidly here a point where that kind of hurt feelingism is going to be all that is resonating. So can somebody talk about that? I saw an article just the other day where we're on the global warming uh, goat path here. The polar vortex, and they explain how it is there, it's possible for the Arctic air to breach its perimeter and come ever southward. Okay. They said it's been happening since you know, as long as there's been ice in the north. Then it said, such phenomenon are considered to be caused by global warming. And I think this was, I think, think, think this was USA Today. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but didn't you just say that this, the, the, for those of you that don't know or are watching in other parts of the world, we are freezing here in Ohio. It's like negative 25 degrees. It was warmer in the Arctic than it was in Chicago, Illinois, uh, the last 24 hours or so. You know, if you're a sun, sunshine somewhere and I have no idea what I'm talking about. So the, the polar vortex has washed over most of America. This kind of thing, according to science, has been happening 
since there's been ice in the north, but it's caused by global warming. So the, you know, in the past, before a man was driving, of course, we all know about the penguin mobiles. The Batman fans know all about this. The, the penguin mobiles. And when, when the penguins would drive the penguin mobiles back in the day, it would also heat the ice caps and cause the polar vortex. Anyway, my bigger point being that little bit of parody I did, is that hate speech? Can that get you thrown out of campus? A campus climate response team. Now, I'm not saying that that's what the team does. I'm simply pointing out that we live in a world now where you have to call a man in a dress a woman. Now, I remember back in, back in the day, I used to consider myself more liberal before realizing that I really was more libertarian. I stand up for the guy to wear the dress if he wants to do so. I stand up for him calling himself a woman. I have no problem with However, at the point that said person is able to mandate what everyone else must say is ridiculous. You may be saying, this is one of the most insightful political commentary segments I've heard in quite some time. That would be great. But if you don't say that, do I at some point have the right to mandate that you do? And that if you somehow hurt my feelings with, with, with something that you utter in the comments, then are you liable in some way? Okay, these are all conversations that stem from this. The point is, they tend to go after the youth. Well, guess what? That's exactly what we are seeing. So I thought that would be worthy of pointing out that they, of course, being communists, according to their own papers, according to their own agenda. And it does appear that that is exactly what they're doing. And you can see the intimidation growing. Again, this campus reform article was from December 24th of 2008. Um, I thought this was interesting, too. My computer is trying to freeze, so I, I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm going to just try to call the whole thing up again. Um a study has found massive, massive problems in the chemicals which are found in our shampoos and toothpastes and everything else. Now, immediately, the question is going to come to me about fluoride. I have spoken on this repeatedly. I do not think fluoride is a good idea. And I can tell you a few things that I have learned in the time that I have unfortunately, been using non-organic products again. After everything happened with Facebook, and go back, I speak on it extensively, I've gone to drinking more pop again, soda. I've, I've gone to drinking pop more frequently, eating junk food more frequently. The shampoo I use is now non-organic, and it's got uh, you know all kinds of hormones and chemicals in it which have been proven to cause cancer. Sodium lauryl sulfate, oh, what makes your shampoo froth if it's not organic, is what makes brake fluid um, uh, able to endure friction, able to endure heat. It, it is a carcinogen. On the package for brake fluid, it's listed as a toxin. So that's, that's just one. Bisphenol A is another one. Now, I want to speak on this for a moment because I remember Alex Jones ended up getting laughed at to scorn for the whole gay frogs thing. And I think the, 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 sometimes people don't understand humor. I think the bigger picture of what he was saying, whether you do or don't like him, was missed here. And that is, aside from his statement and what I thought was a rather amusing parody on it, we know that bisphenol A is changing hormone levels. And we know from science that changed hormone levels prior to birth can lead to homosexual behavior. Am I saying that all gay people are created by bisphenol A? No. 
Am I saying that in some instances they may have been? Yes. Regardless of that, there are so many other chemicals besides fluoride or bisphenol A that are in these things. And this is from the South China Morning Post. Study links early puberty in girls to chemicals in shampoo, toothpaste, and soap, even if only used by the mother during pregnancy. Chemicals known as endocrine disruptors, commonly found in hygiene products, and don't zone out at me unless you don't bathe, may mimic hormones and lead children to mature well before their natural time. Okay, pause. For the children. Okay, I'm sorry it's happening to the children. I don't mean to be condescending there, but it doesn't just excel the functions of children. If you start increasing the speed at which any kind of cellular maturity happens, that can be very dangerous even for the older and these are all things, I think, that often get looked over. Over the past 20 years, girls have been reaching puberty earlier with high risks of some medical and behavioral problems. Attack the youth. Steve Grant talks about this. He's probably the best living rapper. Going after the children. Harming kids. Making... And it happened well. I mean, I'm not... I'm not it happened well before I was ever born making a number of very disturbing things absolutely normal. Divorce, for instance, just being something you do. This normalcy given to that attacked a whole generation before my time. And it became this horrible norm, and my parents didn't divorce, but it had become this horrible norm that cultures just, and the American culture has just accepted and embraced as normal. And it defeats the culture, it defeats the people, and keeps those who want to keep everybody pliable and reliant stranded to do so. It is a direct tool of control. It was what communists said that they were going to do, and exactly what they did. Many pa parents already worry about the chemicals and the personal care products that their kids are exposed to. We know that some of the things we put in our bodies are getting into our bodies, put on our bodies are getting into our bodies, either because they pass through the skin or we breathe them in or we inadvertently ingest them, said Kim Harley, lead author of the study and associate adjunct professor in the School of Public Health at Berkeley in UC Newsletter. So please don't tell me that I'm on a right-wing lunatic fringe here. That I would hardly call the UC Berkeley a conservative institute. Can we agree there? We need to know how these chemicals are affecting our health. Published in the Journal of Human Reproduction, another source, this new report comes from data collected as part of the Center for the Health Assessment of Mothers and Children of Salinas, known as Chemekaus. Um, and the project followed 338 children from birth into adolescence to reveal, how, to reveal how early environmental exposures may impact childhood development. Um, early puberty, or pre precocious puberty, is defined as developing breasts and starting periods before the ages of eight. The average girl starts somewhere around the age of 11. The chemicals in question, phthalates, parabens, parabens, a direct route to cancer, and phenols are known as endocrine disruptors, which may mimic hormones and lead children to mature well before their time. Friends, it doesn't get more stark than that. And it doesn't get better than the dumb D of the day. As we get ready for the dumb D of the day, friends, uh, do me a favor and remember two things. First of all, if you're going to donate to a charity, be very kind to the NSA, PCA, the, yeah, hey, it's PCAs. Uh, be good to the, the critters, if you will. I reloaded my computer because uh, the, the browser had crashed. That's why I got the high def. 
um, make sure you're really good to them. Uh, they're really good to the animals. It's a great way to pay it forward, if you will. And I've had a lot of listeners saying that they're happy that that's the charity that was chosen from the uh, from the donation. So, so am I, because I've looked up more and more of what they've done. And the more I've seen what the ASPCA stands for, the more I'm really happy to be promoting them on the show. And if you don't know how this happened, please donate to my show, this show, what you're watching, at the correct views at hotmail.com. Donate through PayPal. And um, I'll be doing another one in the summer. I, I will promote a charity of your choice from a random listener who has donated. And I'll pick their favorite charity, and I will promote it and pay it forward. All right, friends, the dumdy of the day goes to... Uh, Axios wrote this, but that's not who it goes to. More than 1,000 media jobs lost in one day. BuzzFeed, who has printed some of the most inaccurate fake news known to man, are one of the people who have lost their everything, if you will, in this entire mess. That's well known. The odd thing about that is many of these outlets were the ones calling for other media who they did not agree with to lose their jobs. Let that sink in. How does that work? They were clamoring for journalists like me to lose their jobs. And they did it so that they would be able to take the readership. We had millions of people that were reading the conservative Daily Post and Teddy Stick when I was lucky enough to be one of the people chosen to work there. The, they were attacked, hoping what? They were going to get our readership? No. Hoping to get readership of any of the other thousand plus writers that got hosed over? No. They simply went to other outlets. They didn't go to these thieves. So um, I suggest two things here as we do to the dummy of the day. It's to all of these uh, writers. And for those of you that don't know what the term learn to code means, when the working class, the manufacturing sector of the U.S. was sold out in the 70s and 80s in what became outsourcing. The controllers of society, if you will, started printing suggestions that said learn to code. In other words, they knew that computers were going to blow up like they did. So, you know, just learn to, learn to code. Just change your whole profession. So, when all of these hateful people lost their job in the same way that they rooted for everyone else to lose theirs, everyone started writing, hey, just learn to code, which I thought was hilarious. So there's references to that here. I suggest looking up why they hate PewDiePie, P-E-W-D-I-E-P-I-E. -E -E. um, that is an amazing video that talks about everything here that just got the dumb of the day. Everything that has to do with how the smaller media, me and thousands of others, have been insanely attacked for what we do, for the commentary that we give, and the time that we put in, and the articles that we write. So here, and I suggest looking up that video, and here is what I had to say. I put it on Facebook very succinctly, I think, and at the end, I left a message for PJ Dub, as I call him, Paul Joseph Watson. Here's what I wrote. So, the very same outlets who begged for writers to lose their jobs, of which I was one, are now whining that no one is coming to their pages, even with voices like mine somewhat silenced. Somehow, I don't feel too bad for them. I was real news and honest opinion, while they are neither one. This is one of the best commentaries, meaning the Why They Hate PewDiePie video that is linked. This is one of the best commentaries on the topic that I have ever heard. Really. Some of the same people, I'm censoring this for the uh, viewers, who shut down our page, stole our advertising dollars, and cost us our jobs. And now they are whining that they are losing their jobs. You cannot make this double standard crap up. Maybe that is the universe trying to repay them for their kindness. How does it feel, eh? Did you think that the mainstream media cared if you were on their side either, I asked them? Not that it matters, because you have no relationship, you have no readership, even with me and those like me not writing full-time, for the time being. 
I never called for any liberal to be shut down, but they begged for thousands of us to lose everything that we earned. Now that we are gone, they still don't have any readers. Why? They suck. That is why. They suck even if they clear the playing field. An empty playing field does not make a good team. Sam. And then I wrote, thank you, Paul Joseph Watson, PJ Dub. I was one of the writers who screwed over for no reason in all of this. Our outlet, the Conservative Daily Post slash Steady Tit blah, blah, blah. Our outlet, the Conservative Daily Post Teddy Stick, even got linked from you before. You all remember my uh, drinking while pregnant article was up there. I was very happy with that. Thank you for standing up for the ones like myself who did nothing but top-notch work only to be utterly cheated from that which they slash we rightfully earned. God bless you, PJ Dub. P.S. Nice dancing skills, mate. He's dancing in the video. So that, friends, is the dumdy of the day. Of course, the dunce cap of the month. Ugh, ugh, coming soon. It uh, won't be too long. How's that? Um, Fukushima will be the next show likely that I do. I might do one other one, maybe, that is dealing with a Mandela effect moment that I think people in the area may find interesting. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there before I log off. How many of you have seen or passed a building or something that you know distinctly, and then found a drastic change? Went online, looked up to see when it was changed, and found out it was always that way. I had somebody suggest to me, somebody else who studied this with me. Um, if it's happening on things people noticing, it's probably happening all the time. You should, you know, pay pay attention. And I'd done so for a couple years and thought, oh, you know, it's in people's head. I've seen little things that maybe were a bit odd or a bit off. About a week and a half ago, I saw a, a staggering one. I want to know if anybody else has or if anybody has any interest in that story. If they do, I may do it before the Fukushima show and just make it its own little thing. I don't know. Let me know. Thank you, friends, for listening. Good night, and God bless.